Today on The Breakfast, power experts condemn the increase in electricity tariff, describing it as arbitrary. They are also calling for the immediate reversal of the increment. Also on The Breakfast, we will take a look at the 2022-2023 season of the Nigerian Professional Football League with sports journalists. And like always, we will be reviewing all the biggest stories making headlines across major dailies. Welcome to The Breakfast. I am Justin Akadonye. It's a Friday and we are thanking God. How are you doing where you are? I trust you had yourself a wonderful night rest and you are braced up for the day ahead and of course the weekend. Speaking of the weekend, uh, speaking of Lagos, speaking of all the challenges, it is uh, another harrowing experience again, this period with uh, the fuel scarcity uh, resurfacing and this time around it is worse. There are long queues like always and Nigerians are actually paying as much as 300 now, 400 now to buy a liter of uh, petrol. It is really, really crazy. Yesterday, just yesterday, I was trying to get home from Victoria Island. I was going to the mainland. I spent, uh, an, or ordinarily, I shouldn't spend more than one hour in traffic uh, on the average, but uh, I spent uh, almost four hours getting to the mainland because of the gridlock, because of... Uh, the fuel scarcity, that's basically the issue. And Nigerians are paying through their noses for food stuff, for transportation costs. Even Loma, I think I have to make a case out of this. Ordinarily, uh, what uh, flats pay, I don't know how much you pay in your area, but uh, somewhere on the mainland where I live, we used to pay for... Uh, Loma charges for uh, 100 and 1,250 naira. So after all the traffic, after spending four hours in traffic, I got home. Okay, I was like, let me just go and sort out the sky for December and all since uh, uh, my uh, f my apartment uh, neighbors, my co-tenants, they pay and I collect the money and I go to pay at the Loma. I guess it's too much information. But what I'm trying to say in essence is that I go to a Loma office or their PSP uh, agent, and I was told that it is no longer 1,215 naira, that we are going to be paying, I mean, uh, going forward, 1,850 naira, an increment of 600 naira. When I tried uh, getting an explanation, the lady was telling me, don't I live in Lagos? Don't I live in Nigeria? Uh, that uh, Don't I know that... Um, there's fuel scarcity, diesel, uh, the price of diesel has gone so high that over time they've been talking about increasing their rates. Or like, even if you're going to increase your rate, I'm trying to understand the margin you are adding to this. It used to be 1,215, and uh, you added another 600. Now. What's the difference in the increment of fuel? She was like, well, over time we've not made an increment, but it's just a long term. What I'm trying to say is that Nigerians would also try to make or take advantage of the situation and then um, pour it out on Nigerians uh, who are struggling by the day. Well, that's not top trending, but let me just get straight on to what's trending this morning. We'll start uh, with the NDLEA and, of course, uh, Abakari, who is in the news. Let me just give you a bit of a background concerning that. Now, the detained Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCP Abakari, who is facing a drug trafficking charge, uh, challenged the powers of the Nigerian or National Drug Law Enforcement Agency to prosecute him. Kerry, who heated to head at the Police Intelligence Response Team, IRT, is on trial for allegedly tampering with cocaine that was seized from two convicted drug peddlers, Chibunna Patrick Omeibe and Emeka Alfonso's is in one name. He is answering to an eight-count charge. Now, the NDLA preferred him and the four members of his team, and they are ACP, Sunday Ubia, ASP, Bawa, James, Inspector Simon Agarigba, and Inspector John Nuho. Now, at the presumed hearing, this was on Wednesday, uh, Kiari, through his lawyer, Nureni Jimo, S-A-N, maintained that the charge against him was legally defective, whatever that means, I'm not I'm a lawyer. Well, he told the court that the charge was premature, insisting that the NDLEA ought to have allowed police to exhaust its internal machinery before it instituted the action. He is saying that the NDLEA has not really done its um, 
own homework and um, the charges are premature. That's uh, what uh, Kerry, uh, Kerry's lawyer is saying. Now, the lawyer went on to say that the police had already commenced investigation on allegations against him and issued an interim report. He maintained that he could only be charged to court upon conclusion of the internal investigation by the police. So he can be charged until the police is done uh, with um, their investigation. That is what he is saying, uh, or through his lawyer, to the court. Okay, he went on to argue that the Police Service Commission has similar powers to investigate and discipline errant police officers in line with the Police Act and regulations, the same way the National Judicial Council, NJC, discipline uh, judicial officer. So he's saying that uh, he's supposed to be disciplined by the police um, commission, and of course, uh, before he's taken to the court, just like uh, it's done with judges and the NJC. Now, consequently, Kiari urged the courts to quash the charge and discharge him. His application was also adopted by the other defendant who prayed the court to terminate further proceedings in the charge against them. Meanwhile, the NDLEA, uh, through its director of legal services, Sunday Joseph, urged the courts to dismiss the defendant's preliminary objections, which it argued was based on fundamental misconception of the law. A whole lot of legalese, if you ask me. Well, um, he told the courts that unlike the Armed Forces Act that made provision for establishment of a court-martial, the Police Act expressly stated that police officers are not exempted from any criminal liability under the law. Now, the NDLEA went further to argue that it was, if it was the duty of the police to investigate or prosecute drug-related cases, it would not have transferred such cases to it. Let me quote him. He said, it was police itself that brought this matter to us, knowing that it has no power to handle cases that fall under the NDLEA Act. Now, powers of police does not include selling of hard drugs that were seized. That is what we classify as tempering, and that is the charge the defendant are facing before this court. Mm, and uh, that alone has actually got a whole lot of Nigerians talking on Twitter. There has been so much uh, reactions uh, concerning that. Uh, let me just see if I can take some comments I got from Twitter here. Uh, Captain Kush uh, is replying uh, through a post by Yaba Left, and he says, uh, the whole body is corrupt and they know themselves. Why won't there be a statement like this? He would be free tomorrow and would even get a political uh, position. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, post and the responses here. Some are saying, try or trial. Say, don't be surprised that Abba Kerry will contest for presidency in 2027. All right, uh, Nigerians are saying that there's no moral in this particular case. Uh, Bright uh, Cosgrove Jr. on Twitter as well is saying, this one still has mouth to talk, passing with them for extradite. Okay, a lot of people are saying that he should have been extradited. He would not even have time to be saying, all of this. Uh, another response says, Baba won't sing. A lot of uh, comments um, concerning all of that. So that's, uh, that's uh, the top trend. And number one for today, uh, Abba Kerry is saying that um, the NDLEA cannot try him. It should be done by the Police Service Commission, the PSC. Let's uh, go to what's trending next. Uh, the NNPC is still in the news, and this time around, uh, it has gotten approval to uh, construct or reconstruct 44 uh, roads. Uh, it got about 1.9 trillion naira by the Federal Executive Council. Let me give you a bit of a background to that uh, particular story. All right, now the Federal Executive Council, uh, FEC, uh, at its first uh, meeting uh, this year, uh, approved the proposal by the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing for the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited and its subsidiaries to invest 1.9 trillion naira for the construction of 44 selected federal roads across the country. At uh, the council on Wednesday, chaired by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, they also endorsed the sum of 1.35 billion naira for the procurement of 31 vehicles for the ease of the Federal Ministry of Environment. You know, uh, let's see if we can get uh, what uh, people are saying uh, concerning all of that particular gist. Uh, let me just slide on again now to Twitter. 
All right, uh, Nigerians are actually commenting. And this one is saying, I thought it's the duty of the Ministry of Works to worry about road constructions. Why NNPC? Again, why are the roads not mentioned? This Buhari man has decided to finish Nigeria uh, before leaving. Uh, this one went on to comment on the other issues that were mentioned at the council. He was talking about uh, the Hilux uh, uh, price uh, for approval that was given. All right, uh, Ben Ekero uh, is also commenting as regards the NNPC getting approval to reconstruct 44 roads. He said NNPC should have concentrated their efforts to build new refineries instead of financing road construction. That is a clever way to account for unremitted funds. Can we ever stop this corruption? Mm, a lot of people are even commenting, what's the plan for doctors, the health sector, education? Why is NNPC reconstructing roads? I wondered too. I thought it was uh, in the purview of uh, the Federal Ministry of Works to you know, handle uh, road um, constructions. All right, uh, more comments. Let's see if we can take more. Uh, this one is from 2023. Don Real on Twitter, he's saying, misplaced priority. NNPC should be thinking of how to make our four refineries work first before thinking of constructing roads. More comments. Uh, there are more uh, Nigerians are actually commenting on this particular issue. Now, Kali... Uh, from uh, Twitter as well, uh, at Steve Carly one is saying that Nigeria National Petroleum Company, the NNPC, that cannot produce petroleum product now want to diversify to making roads. And he commented and said more, amazing. Mm. Manga Ingwezo from uh, is also commenting on that particular post on Twitter. He says, this is a distraction from its core business of exploration and production. How will it meet OPEC's quota and increase the country's revenue if it spent its revenue even meant for a federation account on roads? This is completely absurd. He uh, tagged uh, the Nigerian president and he said that it should be reversed. Now, Ote Amuta, uh, let me take uh, two more comments. Why did NNPC Limited, uh, or when rather, did the NNPC Limited uh, become a government? Is this public-private initiative? He now uh, tagged uh, Peter B. Please dismantle all this structure that is milking Nigeria dry when you become the president by God's grace. All right, Ade Oton, uh, at Ade Olujas, uh, is also commenting. He says, uh, the federal government approving NNPC. Hmm. If not Nigeria, many of us no go agree. We weren't consulted on the matter, self. So the federal government of Nigeria, they approve them. No be in Nigeria, would they talk about? All right, uh, this one, Cassandra Ugochuku uh, is tagging the Minister of Works, that's um, Babatunde Fashola. He says, uh, we are hoping that the about to put Hackett and Jungle Road on the Enugu Port Hackett Expressway is included. Don't also forget that the entire federal roads in Benue State have become jungle roads. Let good conscience uh, prevail in this matter as you prepare to leave office. All right, uh, it is actually surprising that uh, the NNPC is now... Uh, getting into the business of uh, road uh, construction or reconstruction. Nigerians are actually talking, and they need uh, uh, precision. They need to know exactly uh, those 44 roads at the end of the day so they can actually be monitored uh, for transparency and, of course, accountability. Uh, on the last uh, top trending for uh, this week, a court remands um, judges orders for alleged um, 500 million naira theft. Uh, we're talking about the judiciary uh, right now and uh, corruption in the judiciary. Let's uh, see if I can give you a bit of um, a background concerning that particular story. I'm going to read that directly from uh, the Punch newspaper. Uh, it says, Akashia or the Kaduna or Kano State Sharia Court Division, who's a night imam and 14 others, including judges and registrars, were on Wednesday evening arraigned and remanded in a correctional center for allegedly committing offenses bordering on criminal Trans, uh, conspiracy, joint act or criminal breach of trust by a public servant, forgery and theft. The offenses run contrary to sections 97, 79, 
315 and 289 of the penal code. When the case came up on Wednesday before the chief magistrate, uh, uh, Mustafa Saad Dati, the prosecution counsel, Zaharuddin Mata, prayed the courts to grant him leave for the content of the first information report be read to the defendant post Wednesday, section 129 of subsection 7 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. As we uh, round off uh, this discourse, uh, let's see if I can get uh, uh, and see how Nigerians are commenting about this uh, on Twitter. Now, Mazi Igwe BK uh, is also responding. He says, uh, I have seen the proponents of Sharia comment on this post yet. What's happening? If it's Rahama Sado now, they will start running up their mouths like oversized uh, water tap. Uh, this one is from Abdul Hakim. He says, uh, the prophet cursed the thief because he is a corrupt element in society. And he if he is left unpunished, his corruption will spread and infect the body of the Omar. Now, Victor Waleemong uh, is also uh, talking this morning. He says, Sharia. Wait, what does Sharia uh, law say about stealing? I hope the law will also be applied to the judge. Okay, uh, I hope Sharia law will be applied. It should not be for the poor alone. Okay, more comments as we round off on this uh, particular discourse. Now, theft, stealing in secret is punished or punishable by the amputation of the offender's right hand and armed or highway robbery may be punished by execution, crucifixion or amputation of hand and fate from opposite sides of the body. Wow, that's really, really harsh. Depending on the severity of the offense. What is their punishment for stealing? Again, Nigerians are asking on Twitter, who go come judge the judge? That's from uh, Chido at Chido Swaga 25. All right, uh, the last comment I'll take this morning. His past judgments need to be reviewed. That is the judge that is um, uh, you know, indicted in all of this. Any armed court must be replaced. Anyone killed must be <laughs> resurrected or the family compensated very well. The Sharia court should be the one to preside over his case again. It is really sad when we hear that um, those who should actually be dispensing justice uh, in uh, the country are actually also culpable in this uh, whole matter. We just hope and justice actually to take its course in this matter and um, those who uh, found them guilty should actually be uh, are made to face uh, the full wrath of the Lord. That stopped trending for this morning. You can uh, comment about all of that on our social media platforms. And we'd want to hear from you. Uh, just let the conversation flow on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook as well. All right, I will take a quick break. When we return, we'll be going straight to Off the Press and see what's making headlines on the front pages of national dailies in a moment to join us again. <laughs> 